Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and in this video, we're going to be going over some comments that Yoshi P made regarding some of the updates coming to Eureka, both in the immediate and not so immediate future. Now, these comments come from a live stream that he did over on Nico Nico. He does these occasionally, and this isn't the first video we've made on these live streams called Yoshi P Walks, where he basically goes to a Japanese server and just plays. That's all he does. But during these live streams, he tends to say things regarding content, or at least some fluff pieces that I, I find mildly entertaining to some degree. And so we're going to cover the things that he said, both regarding Eureka and some of the other stuff, just in case it's stuff of interest. Before we go any further, though, thank you, Carrier of Light, for your translations. Is it the first time that we've used one of yours? Because you do post translations on Reddit quite frequently. So if you appreciate Carrier's work, and I'm sure you do, be sure to go over to the source in the description and thank them over on Reddit. Upvotes, Karma, I don't even know how it all works, but just make sure they're appreciated. Without further ado, though, let's go into some of Yoshi P's comments from the Yoshi P Walk. So, Eureka's first goal was to reanimate right after the launch of an MMO. I guess I kind of get it. Like, it's fresh, a bunch of people are all in the same area, all fighting the same monsters, and then, you know, there's communication as people start to, you know, figure out. Like, if anything, the closest thing Eureka reminds me to is, like, when Rift first launched, where people were shouting, Rift here, Rift there, Rift event. Like, I remember that, but... I, get, I don't know. To me, I, I don't really resonate with that statement. Maybe you guys do more. I'll let you guys discuss that in the comment section. Now, Eureka will get an update in patch 4.3x. I was surprised not by that, but a lot of people came to me when this was posted earlier today and said, wow, they are going to update it in 4.3x. And I was like, yeah, I was pretty confident that they were. Relic weapons in the past have always worked in such a way where we get them and, you know, they're relevant for X amount of time and then we get another update to them. And while they're more relevant, they still aren't really like near what the current max item level is. And then we get another update just before the item level increase of the rest of the items, like from Savage. I don't know. To me, this seemed like a, a given. The way Eureka is designed now, even just the zone Animos, it has room to be expanded, not necessarily in the area itself, but in the activities taking place there. So I never felt that it was limited to the current scope of Animos. I don't think we'll get a major gameplay update to Animos itself, mostly because of the next statement we're going to hear. But we will have some sort of update to the way that we're going to be growing these, probably closer to item level 365 and 370. Now the next Eureka area, if you didn't know, there is another Eureka area planned, at least one. He says the next, but not the last. Um, the Whatever it is, we don't know. Animos means wind. Um, it could be Hydros, Pyros. Uh, I can't remember the other three, but w another one of the elements, basically, will probably be the name of the next Eureka area. And it'll have a few new functions and gameplay elements added to it. He hinted at something you can do solo as well. Now, new functions and gameplay elements, this actually is not a new statement, though after Eureka launched, people are, I guess... I guess uh, latching on to this statement a little bit more because Eureka right now is very straightforward. It was basically exactly as I expected it would be. And so to have those statements made is a little bit refreshing. First of all, it reasserts that there will be another area. They were probably already working on the next area before Animos came out because they're probably trying to get it to a point where it's updated frequently enough. But uh, how much work they have done in it, who can say? I personally wouldn't imagine seeing it till 4.45 at the earliest, but I don't believe there's been any hard confirmation of when the next area is actually going to be released. Um, I don't think it's going to coincide with the update in 4.3x. Personally, I don't. It could, but I, I'm just not holding it to it. Um, and new gameplay elements. I hope it's not just like more stuff on the Magia board or like, I guess, status effects, uh, like a Magia board for status effects. I, I hope it's not stuff like that. Like, I hope it is something that's actually like a new gameplay element because when you say that it's very easy for that to mean basically anything we'll see what they do for solo functions i posted my thoughts on that when i posted my i guess overview or first impressions of animos overall and there's a lot of things they could do to make it a little more solo friendly while still de definitely giving groups the major priority here things like daily hunts or daily quests overall kill uh, 10 enemies with this elemental affinity or kill eight of this enemy or hunt this notorious monster, things like that. You know, just focused goals that people can do within short time frames to make sure that uh, people with less time, even if they do group up, this would be nice for people with less time who just want to get something done a little, feel a little bit more progressive with what they're doing. But anyway, that's the statement regarding the next Eureka area. Now this next one, I was a little excited about it until they fix the translation. I had read this before the mistranslation, and I, I thank you for clarifying, because it would have been really easy to not do that, but I thank you for actually doing it. 
It says they're planning a level sync system, so players who started late can catch up. Now that's been one of my biggest things, and I've only been in there for like three or four days, to like three days I think, and I really only spent four lockouts total I think. And so I saw that and I was like, man, it'd be really good if we could like level sync and we all level sync to this level and then we actually do the grinding, but we do it on, you know, a, I guess enemies that are just a little bit higher level and then kill the notorious monster and we're around it saying, you know, just something like that. So I wasn't just sitting there leeching off of a train for the first however many levels. Um, now for notorious monsters, there is already a level sync, but for a level sync you can use anywhere. That was the hope. That doesn't seem to be what they're talking about. According to this, the translation actually said an elemental level sync, where your elemental levels also sync during fates. They're playing this so NMs don't die in 10 seconds when you have players with 4 to 5 magicites at a low level fate. Now again, still a little strange, but I get it. Basically, it would cap your magicites. So let's say that the, the, the notorious monster is capped at level 3, which I believe would be Emperor. Yes, I believe that would be... No, Emperor is 4, but all the same, we'll use him. Um, so let's say you're at Emperor, and he's only level 4, it's a level 4 Notorious Monster. I'd imagine they would cap you at 2 Magicites based on the system. I guess it's not really a bother, I would prefer a real level sync system, so I don't think this should be the priority, but that's, that's what they want to do, that's what they're going to do. I'm not against it, it maintains a little bit of the challenging element, so players can actually get to the Notorious Monsters if they're newer, but it doesn't, I guess, help alleviate one of the other issues Eureka has. If they make Eureka too convenient, Eureka will turn into just what the usual 14 grind is. It, it won't stand out in any way, which I guess kind of, I understand. I was saying they have all these other elements in the rest of the game, like hunts and stuff that could be incorporated into Eureka. But I get what they're saying. It's that if you do that, then people just go to Eureka and it's basically the same as if they had like a level 61 job and they went around killing uh, marks on the hunt board for EXP every day. So I kind of get it, um, but... I want to see where they can strike that balance, because they want to strike a balance in between, and I'm interested to see how they plan on doing that. The next hot, uh, hot, hot fixes, all right, hot fixes, planned for the end of March, we already know about these, will include some improvements to the gameplay and adjustments to lockboxes. Now, I don't know what adjustments to gameplay means, because I didn't read, there's another statement that Naoki Yoshida made regarding the fact that there's going to be um, lock, uh, lockbox adjustments uh, at the end of the month. So I'm just saving my lockboxes for now and waiting until that comes. I believe it's specifically so you don't get just a ton of fireworks and nothing else. But uh, we'll wait and see what the gameplay elements that they end up or improvements to gameplay they plan on making. Hotfix is coming after that will make it easier to turn Onimos crystals into protein crystals. So uh, right now you have to do them one at a time. By the way, if you're a keyboard player and not a controller player, number one recommendation I would make is to, once you get into the, the Onimos crystal, becoming a protein crystal screen, just spam zero on your numpad. If that doesn't work, press num lock and then do it again. And that basically acts as, that'll just press yes over and over again. It's better than manually doing it with the mouse. If you're really meta, you'll make a macro for it, but all the same. Um, and by the way, I mean a keyboard macro that just presses the insert key a million times, so you don't even need to think about it. But anyway, yeah, there's going to be adjustments to make that easier. Hopefully it just means you can do more than one Onimos crystal identification at once. So, fingers crossed on that one. Now, this is nothing to do with, um, I guess, gameplay elements, but, uh... They will not implement a death scythe in Final Fantasy XIV, um, but it's in quotes, by the way. So this is like a whole huge thing that goes back to Final Fantasy XI when it came to scythes, and specifically the death scythe. Um, and that's why it's in quotes. It's like a whole huge thing. I, I know that in the actual Reddit post under this, there's a real explanation. Uh, they are considering adding the, bl the Black Coda Hardy, uh, which is a body piece from XI. I remember that piece very well. Required crafting that's a drop from Capricious Cassie. She was the only one that dropped it, who actually already exists in fourteen as a regular fate in East Shroud. A Death Scythe is an item from Final Fantasy XI with damage 97, delay 528. So it's just a scythe. That's all it was. And it was overpowered for a craftable NQ regular item, meaning that it was just, a strong, just as strong as top tier weapons for other jobs even though it was easy to get and cheap on the auction house equals market board death scythe hayashi the current uh death scythe hayashi current lead item designer who got his name from the same item was on the stream with yoshi p tonight and to this day and after 14 years people still remember him and his sins as the man who overpowered a scythe for those players who haven't played 11 just imagine a crafted item level 320 weapon not 350 320 nq weapon being as strong as kefka weapon so there you go, there's the whole explanation. Now you don't even need to scroll down. Yeah, I had forgotten about the Death Scythe until this was brought up, because I never played Dark Knight back in Final Fantasy XI, but I do remember hearing this name. There's a couple of other sites that come to mind as well. 
But uh, yeah, this they won't do that basically ever. Um, then there was just some other things here. Lead item designer revealed some secrets regarding minions. The scions interact with each other. Thancred moves closer to Minfilia. Ooh. The Kalka and Bra uh, Kalka Brina minions only dance when the other twin minion is summoned and doesn't dance with other minions. Yeah, we knew that. The Ultras minion shows a different reaction with Pokemon male female. A lot of those stuff we had already known. Um, in fact, all of those I think we had known. Though I probably wouldn't have noticed the fan card one personally. People in the comments were worried Yoshi P would leave the 14 team because he was promoted to executive office. In case you didn't know, Yoshi P got a promotion, but he only took that job under the pretense that he could still work on Final Fantasy 14, and they accepted that condition. Um, and apparently it was a pretty big honor. He got promoted after only 10 years at the company, which is very uncommon, but I think we know why, because uh, he's done a lot for that company recently. Uh, being able to see your underwear during the... I don't, I don't need to read this. Come on. This... All right. They they just... People looking at... People upskirting during Biako. This is all you need to hear. Um, let's see. Uh, comment sneak in. You guys see Yoshi P has served a bento, an expensive lunchbox. Apparently a, a Makanochi bento is a more expensive one. Um, now he's executive officer. You've read too many novels to believe that. Okay. Yoshi P said a lot of dev members leave the company as soon as their work is done so they can go home and play Eureka. Yoshi P himself is refrain refraining from playing because he feels guilty for the rollback issues that occurred after the release. So I wasn't playing when the rollback happened. I heard about it after reading this. So that's an interesting thing. He, he doesn't want to do it because he feels guilty. I almost say he should just go and enjoy it as long as the company does the right thing in regards to refunding it. Even if some of those people are already level 20, then, you know, I guess it's fine. But, like, you can't just not do it because you're guilty. You might as well just play it. I mean, you worked on it. You play the game normally like everyone else. You should enjoy it, you know, if you do. Um, Hayashi used to work at the circus. Okay. <laughs> One of the viewers said Yoshifi's Lala is ugly and he was hurt by that comment. Death Scythe Yashi agreed to it and Yoshi P said, I'll kill you. <laughs> See, it's stuff like that. I wish I spoke Japanese just for things like that because that's funny. Um, 11 player pointed out the Fafnir minion description is wrong. When you mouse over the minion, Fafnir says occasionally attacks three times, but it's supposed to say two to three times. Hayashi just went, yeah. okay. Prince Penguin minion, uh, prize from the LOV tournament, isn't owned by that many people, but it has an RNG mechanic where it slides on its belly when it moves around. I like that. Two types of minions that climb on your shoulder had one that climbs up on their own and others that require beckoning. We knew that. Um, so Yokai Watch is the only collab partner who asked for a retake. Oh, so he asked for a retake. Well, that could just be a translation thing, but still. Uh, Yoshi P's private character is actually an hour off. They will talk about the next ultimate fight during the next live. I mean, I expected that. I mean, they can't not talk about it at this point. Double negative. But um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to that. Teru from Glay, who was in charge of the theme song for Data Light, invited Yoshi P to his raid static, but Teru told everyone on Twitter that he wasn't supposed to. When he wasn't supposed to, and because Teru said Yoshi P won't use any dev powers, Yoshi P has to level another character from scratch on Teru's server. So Yoshi P is, uh, he got griefed a little bit on that one, because now he's got to level a whole other character. And gear it before 4.4, though it shouldn't be too bad for him. The voiceovers are recorded nine months before the actual release. If you take Kefka to the north and keep him there, you can bait his teleport to the south. I feel like most people who do it know that. I didn't mention it in my guide just because the boss positioning is just always in such a way where you kind of pick up on it. But I was surprised. I guess people didn't know that. I should have mentioned it. I should have mentioned it. I'll take fall. The next live letter will be patch 4.3 part one and the guest will be Foxclon, the person who always sits next to Yoshi P. All right. And as the global community producer, he'll be talking about behind the scenes. Oh, so he literally, I thought it was a joke just saying, and the person who will be joining me is the same guy as always. No, apparently he's actually going to talk about his other, like his responsibilities outside that. I'm glad because I love Foxlon. If you've ever met him in person, he is awesome. And he speaks English a lot better than a lot of people think. I know the Batman thing from one of the, from the Stormblood preview is something that comes to mind for a lot of people, but uh, he's awesome. Go up and shake his hand and thank that man because he is fantastic. He also posts a lot of food on Twitter. Thank you, Motorcycle. He posts a lot of food on Twitter, so if you want to be hungry, do that as well. But anyway, uh, the source is here at the bottom for all that, and it's a pretty interesting thing. I hope Yoshi P does these more frequently. I, I agree with them not being scheduled in a sense like this one wasn't, but it's cool that these things just happen, you know? We're always news hungry. We don't know when the next live letter is, although I heard somebody say there were whispers of, I think, April 14th or something like that. Whispers, but not confirmation. Um... But all the same, these things are awesome. So Yoshi P, keep doing these things and enjoy Eureka. Just enjoy it. Just if don't feel guilty, just go do it. But anyway, thank you for watching this video. Again, apologies. I went on a little longer than I wanted to, which is, sounds like an oxymoron for me. But 
I just wanted to talk my heart out with everything that's been going on lately. So that's me. Fuck it. I don't, I don't, that's fuck it. That's me. That's it. That's what you get. So thanks for watching. If you made it this far, thank you. I will see you all in the next video. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe and share. And until next time, take care.